Hej så all Metal Maniacs and welcome to another episode on Iron Horde channel. As you well know by now I've been making a number of videos tackling different scenes, different countries with their own particular heavy metal approach towards music and uh, the culture in general, focusing on the 80s decade. We've been to the US with the power metal style, we've been to the new wave of British heavy metal, Scandinavian metal last week. We went to uh, France with their own approach of heavy metal. This time round I'm going to speak about a very underrated scene, possibly the most underrated one I have done from all those places I have just mentioned and I'm speaking about the Italian heavy metal scene of the 80s. It's interesting to, to know that this country has also given us a lot of great heavy metal bands and a lot of great heavy metal albums which we will find out in this episode. So stay tuned, stay there, let's go to the opening theme and then straight to the albums. Let's go! <laughs> again for joining us for another episode here on Iron Horror TV. Our job is to review albums such as bands, review festivals, talk about anything from the cultural aspect regarding heavy metal. So if these are subjects which interest you, please consider subscribing, liking and sharing this video on social media. It will help us out to reach more metalheads. So as I said, another episode from the Essential Albums series and uh, as I said and as obviously you have read from the title of this video we're going to go to Italy find out 10 of the essential albums from the 80s heavy metal scene from Italy. Let me tell you that most of the times I think that there is a huge underestimation of the contribution of these bands both nationally with regards to Italy but also in European metal and also worldwide metal because nowadays metal can be reached by everyone uh, in a few clicks and therefore the influence these bands have had and still have is priceless as far as I'm concerned and I pass a lot of great moments listening to these albums and uh, they never get old for me. I actually think that the uh, Mediterranean area with regards to metals is generally underrated as a whole. People think because it's a band from Sweden or from Norway or from Germany, uh, they kind of immediately you think they are good, but if a band is from Spain or from Greece or from Italy or from Malta, they kind of have to work more to convince the listener and that's kind of the idea I get and throughout these years visiting festivals abroad, even booking bands in Malta. Let's go back to the albums. Reputation is one thing, reality is another as we will see from the albums on this list. Interesting to mention that contrary to the French heavy metal scene, the albums on this list, the lyrics are all written in English and there are uh, no albums with Italian lyrics, although some of these bands have released most of them prior to releasing the albums I'm going to mention tracks in Italian. Again, I confirm what I said last week that as far as I'm concerned, a band, if possible, needs to sing in, in their native language because their emotions and their passion comes out much clearer rather than singing in a, in a foreign language. But anyway, most of the times to reach a wider audience you need to generally use the English language, but for me personally, the native language adds more charm to the music, more identity and more personality. Not only that, some of the bands here have been marketed as being American, even though they were Italian. There was a habit in Italy, I, I'm not sure if it happened as well. In other countries, in Europe especially, or maybe South America or Asian countries, I don't know. But in Italy, there were certain products marketed as American, so that the Italians 
would buy them more because obviously coming from the US it has to be a better product or a better movie or a be better band in this case. A good example of this is uh, two of my childhood heroes, actors Bud Spencer and Terence Hill, being marketed as being American. Their names were changed obviously, Bud Spencer and Terence Hill, which as most of you will surely know are in their birth names, um, but even the director, even the setting of the movies or everything gives off an American feel. I remember getting to know that Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill weren't actually American, possibly 11, 12, 13 years old, something like that. But anyway, this shows a different approach to the way bands were being marketed at the time. A small parenthesis before going ahead with the albums, I didn't include in this list any 80s doom metal bands as most of you know, I'm a big doom metal fan and Italy has a very peculiar and authentic doom metal scene, especially from the 80s, carrying on to the 90s, with a particular sound and they will be doing a separate video for that because I don't want to leave any albums out of this list. Obviously, if I mix doom metal and heavy metal together, a lot of albums will have to stay out of this list because it's already 10 albums, a lot to say about them, let alone increasing that number. So stay tuned for that video that I will do very soon. So no doom metal albums in this list. So the first album is from 1981 and it's a self-titled album by the band Strike. It was released by Skyzo Records or Skizo Records. I'm not sure if the pronunciation is right. And this is actually the band that was marketed, as I said before, as being American. Although in reality, out of the four members, two at a particular period of time, obviously when this album was recorded, two of them were actually American themselves. But the main songwriters behind the band were Italian. Influences on this album are definitely the new wave of British heavy metal. Like most of the albums in this list, you will hear me repeating myself on this aspect almost throughout every album we have on here. But this album leans more towards the hard rock, the ACDC style, Crocus, 70s riot that is the kind of atmosphere the kind of approach we have over here the production is not that good but as it happens in most of the cases again on the on albums on this list that 80s kind of uh, budget production kind of gives a uh, a charm of its own. So it's not really damaging the album. It could have been better, definitely, but it still gives a certain charm and identity to the album. Continuing from the video from last week, from the French metal scene, there is uh, one track on here, which is titled I Want to Rock, and the initial riff sounds very similar to uh, one of the riffs at the beginning of the Sortilege track titled Chasse Le Dragon or vice versa actually because uh, this album was released in 91 whereas that album from which that track is taken was released in 1986 if I remember correctly. But anyway these are influences which considering that France and Italy are close to each other and the kind of music that was around during the early 80s certain influences of course are similar to the bands and certain riffs being written might have been influenced by the same bands or might be also a coincidence. We'll never know. This album got really re-released with a different cover later on and some some demo tracks were also added if I'm not mistaken and some live tracks and they were gathered into a compilation. If I had to choose a favorite track in here it would possibly be uh, the track Head Out. Next album was on the list is uh, the album Warning Games by the band Occulta released in 1984 on the Scott Tometal records. I can really review this band and this album in one simple phrase and say that this album is basically uh, the Italian version of a Scorpions album. Especially the vocals. The vocals are so similar to Klaus Main. Sometimes it's, it's frightening how two vocals can sound so similar to each other. Obviously, apart from the Scorpions influence, there's also an Iron Maiden influence as well. Um, some hard rock as well. You, you can see this mix of hard rock and heavy metal in bands from early 80s uh, due to the fact that uh, there were influence coming from the 70s and the new wave of British heavy metal. So kind of the music was still trying to find its own identity. So bands used to take pick and mix kind of from different genres and use them to come up with something of their own. 
This album is truly a hidden gem. I remember the first time I heard it, I uh, made the pick that I wanted to find this album and buy it as soon as possible. And I was searching around a bit. And uh, if I remember correctly, I got this album from a festival I attended abroad. I was searching the crates as many vinyl enthusiasts do. And as soon as I saw this album, I immediately uh, took it out. I was very sure that I was going to buy it because this is such a hidden gem of an album, it's so good. This is one of those albums that should be in any self-respecting Metalheads collection. Favorite track on here is the uh, title track, which is Warning Games, which it probably is the track on which the vocalist over here resembles mostly Klaus Main. I didn't choose it as a favorite track for that reason, but because it's the best track on, on here. But when you go and hear this track, uh, as most of you will surely do, you can understand the similarity between both vocalists. So as you can see uh, from these two albums, these are uh, pretty obscure bands. And I have out of this list of 10 albums, I have three more albums, which are, I can categorize as quite obscure after those five albums i will speak about two albums which are more into the prog epic kind of style and then leave the last three albums which i think are the most famous albums the ones that have left the biggest impact on the italian metal scene so the next album is titled behind the lines by the band Sabotage, released in 1986 by Trans Euro Records. This album kind of ups the, the tempo compared to the previous two. It's more akin to the US power metal of the 80s. I have done a video about the US power metal, as I said in the introduction, and I'm going to link the video over here. If you haven't seen it, go and see it from that link. The vocals are raspy and melodic at the same time. There's a good balance between both. They kind of remind me kind of a mix between Rob Halford and Blackie Lawless from the early Wasp albums. The music kind of reminds me of uh, Savage Grays and uh, Hellstar from both from the US power metal scene. That's kind of a good uh, overview of the sound of this band. Production again is not that good, but good enough to be able to enjoy this album. Strangely enough, this album was released the year after it was, so in 1987, by a different label. Um, I don't know if this happened because of the great demand for this album. I'm not sure. I mean, it's some, it's quite strange that an album of this type gets released a year later. Um, maybe some of my Italian friends can shed some light on this issue as well. Favorite track on here is uh, Fight For Your Music. It's a good track. It's actually a great track, but I'm choosing it especially because of the lyrics, because they are really inspirational and you can feel the passion for heavy metal in these lyrics. It's kind of an anthem for heavy metal. Let's keep with the albums uh, reminiscent of the US power metal scene and I'm choosing the next album by the band Dark Lord and the album titled It's Night Time, released in 1988 by Tonau Records. This is slightly bit more polished, more melodic, kind of heavy metal. I remember when I discovered this band it popped up on my YouTube was I was listening to some music and I liked the album so much I played it on repeat but I didn't care to say some information about the band because unknowingly I took it for granted this band was an 80s American band but then when I uh, started searching about the band I remember being somewhat shocked that they were actually from Italy because even the singing and there's the accent of the singer sometimes with these kinds of bands there is a heavy accent due to the language not being their mother tongue but this band's music and uh, all around package is so American I mean it reminds me of uh, early Motley Crue albums, Van Halen, Dio's solo albums. There's a raspy edge on the vocals, although them being generally clean. I mean, this was a total surprise for me. Sometimes I forget about this album, but uh, again, it's, it happens many times for me. Sometimes it pops in my mind and I have to go and listen to it as soon as possible. If this album would have had a proper distributor behind it and marketed properly, I have no doubt that it would have been a hit in the US market. The tracks are not that long, are quite short, radio friendly. It had all the ingredients to be a more famous album and to sell quite 
quite well, but obviously it remained hidden underneath the sands of time and uh, I barely see it posted anywhere and I think it's a very obscure album and one which should have more recognition and that is why I do these videos because sometimes it is difficult to meet this, these albums due to them not being properly advertised. So maybe these videos will promote some albums which you as a listener of heavy metal would probably not get to know unless someone would come up to you and tell you about it. And obviously with these videos I'm reaching a wider audience and try to do some justice to these records which deserve much more attention than they actually got. Favorite track on here is uh, One Night in the City. Incidentally, Dio has a track named One Night in the City in the album Last in Line. I don't know if it's a coincidence or not. Um, but anyway, if Dio is one of your influences, I think you got off to a great start as a band. So nothing wrong with that. So the fifth album and last album from this obscure initial section. And I'm speaking about the album On The Prowl by Crying Steel, released in 1987 by LM Records. Again, another album uh, which takes influence from the US power metal scene. Great melodies, catchy choruses, high-pitched vocals. There's a particular track, Standalone, where the vocals on this album, they are so high-pitched that kind of remind me of Midnight from Crimson Glory. As I said, most of the tracks on here have an up-tempo kind of feel, um, apart from a couple of tracks which are a bit slower there's a use of synth throughout these tracks although uh, funnily enough no one is credited on the album as playing the synths the synthesizer or the keyboards surprisingly enough on this album the production is quite good and it helps to accentuate those melodic parts which are uh, prevalent in this album some parts actually reminds me of uh, white snake so fans of that band they do well to check this band out uh, influence are also similar to the previous bands I mentioned from the bands which were influenced by the US power metal scenes but in the end I, I remind you that uh, to get the best feel out of these records is to listen to them I mean no words can do them justice each one of them has its own identity although most of the influences are the same so take the time to search for these album and uh, making up your own mind about them and which one you prefer and which one you don't. Obviously, I would be happy if you write in the comments which of these bands you have discovered through these videos because, as I said, that is the aim of this channel. Favorite track on this album is uh, Thunder Gods, but please check out the lyrics on the track Fly Away because they are quite hilarious and one who's, who uh, knows a bit of the Italian culture, I think, will understand them better, but really check them out because they are interesting now on to two uh, epic power progressive albums that i mentioned that, that i have decided to add to this list two magnificent albums not easy to review because they have different influence almost a track leans towards particular influences whilst another goes totally the another way well not really totally because we're speaking about heavy metal over here but you get the idea the, some of it is epic some of it is prog power the first album on this list is Ire Melanox by the band Adramelch released in 1988 by Metal Master Records this band is like a mix of uh, Fate's Warning Warlord with hints of kind of technical trash in certain parts i'm thinking about bands like uh, for example watchtower this kind of the uh, vibe i get there is a a big feel on the power aspect on the music here with creating a lot of atmosphere even epic at times this is one of those albums which is not easy to get into i mean uh, the vocals are a bit strange but it's often happens in this situation the vocals become part and parcel of the music you're listening so once you get into the music once it clicks with you because these are kind of a peculiar uh, kind of sounding bands uh, but once it clicks with you i mean the vocals become such an added bonus to the music this is the kind of music that once you understand it it really gives you that uh, kind of satisfaction that you have discovered such type of album whereas the others are kind of classic heavy metal you listen to them say yeah this is good but these albums they, they there's a, like an added satisfaction to it and i think this album Ire melanox is, is one of those kind of albums a strange and funny aspect about this is that if i had to make a list of from my least favorite 
tracks on this album to my favorite track on this album it would be the track list as it is on the album so starting from my least favorite track and the last track being my favorite track on this record titled the dream of a jester next album is not only one of my all-time favorite albums but it comes from one of my all-time favorite bands and i'm speaking about the self-titled album by the band dark quarter released in 1987 with label service records those soaring vocals of Gianni Nepi are so amazing. The relentless drumming by uh, Paolo Nipa Ninci, Fulberto Serena on guitars. This album has some of the most amazing guitar solos I have ever heard. Such an underrated guitarist, Fulberto Serena. I mean, he deserves all the praise. I was lucky enough to host this band in Malta for two times. That's how much I love this band. And even my friends and colleagues in the Malta Doom Metal Fest are avid fans as well of these bands apart from that they are great people i can safely regard them as friends of mine i have met them numerous times even abroad they are great people apart from being great musicians so be sure to check everything from dark quarter my favorite album is this one right here but everything they have done is just amazing they have released an album last year which is one of my favorite albums from the 2020 i have done a video on my top 2020 albums which i'm linking as well up here go and see it and their last album pompeii is surely another magnificent piece of work as i said all tracks are amazing but if i had to choose a favorite track it would be gates of hell so we have arrived to the last three bands which as i said earlier on in this video i think these three bands and albums are the ones that have left the biggest impact they have they are possibly the most famous uh, in italy and i'm not sure about the international aspect for sure as you may or may not know uh, malta's very near to italy for my generation growing up we used to watch the italian television we were born watching italian tv shows and uh, we know quite well about the italian culture it's very close to the maltese culture as well so not not a lot of differences there so i have quite a bit of a grab on the pulse of the italian metal scene in general so, and i know how much these three bands are venerated in italy um, but i'm not sure about how famous they are outside of italy so anyone outside of italy which can give us a bit of feedback about this in the comments below tell us how famous these bands are or if they are totally obscure or just fill up this curiosity of mine uh, about these bands because I have no idea how how follow these bands are outside of Italy. So the next album is the self-titled album released in 1983 by the band Vanexa. It was released on Durium Records and uh, let me tell you if there is one album from the Italian scene in general that could have infiltrated the new wave of British heavy metal scene and no one would have noticed this is the one it's impressive from the vocals to the production to the composition of the tracks if the guys behind the band would have said they were British no one would have thought otherwise it is that kind of fast paced new wave of British heavy metal uh, which reminds me of uh, Diamond Head, Holocaust, uh, Virtue that kind of uh, new wave of British heavy metal style the production is very raw which again gives it that that charm as well with most of the bands struggling financially for those who have watched my new wave of British heavy metal video and I'm sure you already knew this that movement of bands was influenced by a working class culture so most of the bands didn't have any money to spend so the production was very cheap and this album feels the same way that's why I said even the production could have been dubbed as being from that period of time from the geographical area as well so this is definitely a, one of the classic heavy metal albums from italy not to be missed and if i had to choose a favorite track on here it would be 1000 nights next up is possibly the most famous band 80s heavy metal band from italy and i'm speaking about vanadium with their album race with the devil released in 1983 also with Durium Records. The band is fronted by uh, one of the icons of Italy's heavy metal scene, Pino Scotto. Although he left the band in 1990, only to return in 1995 for only a year, releasing an album. Pino Scotto remained very active in the Italian heavy metal scene and recently, well, 
recently, but I think post 2000, he was presenting a TV show on Rock TV, which is an Italian network channel. Vanatium plays a mix of hard rock and heavy metal, uh, similar to previous bands, as I have already mentioned. Influences here, for sure, Saxon, Deep Purple, and uh, I think the hard rock part is more into ACDC at times so those are the three bands which uh, come to mind when i hear the tracks from this record they have included also keyboards which remind that deep purple organ sound as well that's where the influence to deep purple mainly is but anyway this is another classic heavy metal record no one should shy away from listening to this record because it's it's a fun record and i think from this discography this album is the one that represents them best favorite track from this record would be i got a clash with you so we have arrived to the last album from uh, this list of bands i have chosen i have left this band last on purpose this is a band which has left a big impact on the italian scene but it also happens to be one of the first band i have discovered from the italian scene and uh, I keep on listening to them very, very frequently. It is one of my all-time favorite bands as well. And I'm speaking about the band Strana Officina and the album Rock and Roll Prisoners released in 1989 with Metal Master Records. Although released in 1989, this is their first full-length album. They have a number of demos and the piece before releasing this. But Son of Ficina is regarded as one of the first heavy metal bands from the Italian scene being established as a band in 1977. We have a lot of Iron Maiden influences with uh, Strano Ficina, uh, obviously new wave of British heavy metal that should be taken for granted at this stage. I mean, you have, I think I have included them as an influence in almost all the albums. The greatness of Stan of Ficina, as I said earlier, is when they sing in Italian. This album is in English and uh, uh, an interesting fact is all of the albums I have mentioned over here are in English, but their Italian tracks are so emotional, so much more magical. Um, just listen to tracks like Guerra Triste or uh, Autostrada dei Sogni or uh, Piccolo Uccello Bianco. The lyrics are so good. Guitarist Fabio Cappanera is a magician with the guitar. One of the best guitarists from Italy, if I, as far as I'm concerned, along with Fulberto Serena from Dark Quarter, which I have mentioned earlier. This is the only album which they have included keyboards on. It really adds uh, an interesting touch to the music. As I said, the band is made up of the Capanera brothers, Fabio and Roberto on drums, and uh, Enzo Mascolo on bass, and uh, Bud Ancelotti on vocals, who is another very identifiable metal vocalist in the Italian scene. This is another icon for all the metal heads from Italy. Unfortunately, in 1993, the Capanera brothers lost their life in a road accident. At that point in time, uh, the band didn't continue, of course. Um, but then, in 2006, the son of Roberto Capanera and uh, the nephew of both brothers took their place. The son of Roberto took the drums like his father and uh, the nephew took the guitars and uh, they started back the band with Bad Ancelotti and that Somas Colo releasing uh, the album The Fate which was a re-recording of earlier track by Stan Officina and also released another two full-length albums in the years that followed. In fact the t-shirt I am wearing right now is the cover art from their last album called Law of the Jungle. Favorite track on here is Black Moon, which also was released with Italian lyrics and uh, I advise you to, uh, to go for that first. Uh, the Italian name is Luna Nera. So there goes my list for uh, this video. I hope you find and I hope you will find interesting albums on this list. At the cost of uh, sounding repetitive, this is just the tip of the iceberg. As I said, uh, sometimes Italy is not regarded as a hub for 80s heavy metal but i assure you once you start delving deep down in the underground scene you will find a lot of good albums and you will be amazed how many of the hidden gems there are from this country it pains me to to leave some of the albums out other albums from different bands but i want to mention three bands which have definitely influenced the extreme metal scene in the 80s especially in italy but not only 
and I'm speaking about uh, Necrodet with the album Into the Macabre, the band Bulldozer with the album A Day of Red, and uh, Mainframe Collapse by the band Schizo. These three bands also you should listen to if you're into uh, thrash metal, extreme metal in general, in fact. Into the Macabre by Necrodet is regarded as one of the pioneering albums of black metal. So I hope this information will kickstart your interest into these bands. One last thing before I uh, close off this episode, if you're interested in this content and you find it interesting and informative, please consider subscribing to this channel, click on the bell as well to be notified, like, share this video on social media, it will really help us out to give some justice to these bands and for them to have that recognition that they really deserve. There is nothing more for me to add. Um, I hope to see you in our next episodes. We released episodes on Wednesdays and Sundays. So until then, stay safe and metal on. Cheers. Mm -hmm.